Okay, part five, ore refining and components. So, uh, ore refining and component assembly. Basically what we're going to be doing is taking the hand drill, left mouse buttoning, all that ore over there. Well, some of it anyway. Refineries can process all types of ore, deposit ore directly into the refinery or into a nearby cart or container. Refineries will always try to pull ore into their inventory from accessible conveyor connected storage. You can reorder the refinery's queue by moving ores into its refine inventory. Only one stack is processed at a time, whichever one is on the left. Ore process at different rates, and some are very slow. Iron tends to be really fast, stone tends to be really fast, uh, uranium takes forever. Blast Arc Furnace. Works faster than the refinery, but can only process cobalt, nickel, and iron. Pick up hand drill from this cargo container. Assembler manufactures components from refined blah blah blah. Basically, we'll need to actually assemble things in a minute. Uh, queue up components required by accessing the control panel with K and selecting the production tab. Subtab components should be selected, then click the components required to add them to the assembler build queue. Conveyor sorters work to filter out and basically stop stuff from moving past them that you don't want. So, for instance, I'll just do a K here. Somewhere in here. Okay, conveyor sorter. It's not showing up on the left. Uh, active filter components, stuff that won't go through is all this. Once components have constructed, uh, turn the welder on, welder will automatically draw stuff. Components that will need 15 steel plate, 2 computer, 4 motor, 4 large steel tube, 15 construction components. Manufacture components for the piston to proceed. So what we can do, pressing on I go into the control panel. Production, this is the assembler, you can access this from any control panel that it's connected to. So, like for instance, 15 steel plates. It's red out, so that means we don't have any of the materials. Uh, iron ingot, cobalt ingot, gold ingot, platinum ingot, silicone wafers. Let's see, gravel, which is only really used for reactor components. Nickel ingot, magnesium powder is used in any of the explosives. Uh, uranium ingot, which is only really used in the missiles. But Silver power, silver, I feel like I'm forgetting one, maybe, but basically those are the materials that you need to get. Now different things build at different rates, construction components take forever. So two computers, four motors, and four large steel tubes. Last video with ice, iron, gold, silicone, cobalt, uranium, nickel. Uranium is annoying as hell because it's dark, and even with the flashlight on, it doesn't actually change anything really. Inventory Unfortunately, we have the small inventory size again. They need to fix that. So that automatically pulls it to the arc furnace, and this moves fast, like I said. And then it'll automatically pull that into the refinery, or not refinery, the uh, assembler, as it needs it. Oh. 
also something that definitely was noticed before is that all the stuff that I picked up when I hit max inventory, it leaves the original source. So like for instance, volume is near max. Inventory full. And then that's just however much ore is left in the pile. So this also works for components when they fall to the ground. If you have too much inventory space taken up from uh, grinding away. start doing that for your radio. Luckily we won't need, uh, need much for the next part. We just need to wait on that. Also things that can be done, you can stop the assembler, we have to disassemble it. And that's the components and I'll take it apart and see whatever they were built from. So if you need certain things, but you have a pointless amount of, let's say, extra components from the ships you pirated or destroyed, you can break that down into the iron, cobalt, and gold, and platinum. Um, I find that I tend to For some reason, those are the ones that I don't run too often. Minus the occasional world where you just spawn things weirdly. So with that, we have all our components. Now we just need to turn the welder on. I didn't put enough motor, uh, motors into the queue. That was close, nearly fell in my doom. I'm forgetting something else. Okay, so that's pushing that, and we're only kind of on it, which is why I seem to be slightly pushed away when that's moving. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, reactor, this is why we need the uranium. Reactors don't use too much over a short period of time, so that's why we can get away with not even one kilogram of it. Objective and that's the tutorial for uh, ore and refining and then space. So, uh, yeah, on to the next part. Alright, tutorial 6 conveyors, collectors, connectors, and ejectors.
Ultimate Space Race of 2029. So yeah, this is a pretty straightforward one. Um, I'll start with the right side first. Uh, ejectors and collectors. So ejectors are those things up there. They'll just spit things out as long as there's actual inventory. The uh, collectors are right on top of there. They'll pick up anything that flies towards them that they can. So they catch material and put it through the conveyor systems. Connector lights turn yellow when they are close enough to lock with other connectors. Lock them together to connect separate conveyor systems. So right now that green light shows that it's in the path, so it'll actually collect things, turn it on, start spitting out, and it'll keep doing that. We don't really need a lot, so we'll just do that, and then stuff will bounce out, and then we'll turn it off. And then we just need to extend that arm down there, and then yellow means it's close, green means it's connected, so it actually functions. Into the inventory. Uh, use this little checkbox area here to uh, very specifically say where it's supposed to go. Okay, I cheated there, but that's where it's supposed to go, and then in your inventory. That's if you do it remotely. Uh, welder stuff. So that's it for collectors and ejectors. Welder stuff. Okay. So right now we have to extend it. And then when it connects, we just lock it. Press K to get to the control panel. Go to the inventory. that to cut down the inventory choices. So that's the arm. Next up, we unlock it. Retract it. I'll demonstrate in a minute why this is important. Rotate. And I'm saving some time. It's basically pistons and advanced rotors also work as conveyors along for more complex systems. Warning, do not activate piston or rotor when connector is locked. Connect to arm components or arm to component storage. Transfer components to arm storage. Disconnect and rotate arm. Connect to station connector. Transfer components to welder storage. Turn welder on. Let it finish. Turn it off. Use button panel. So this is the component destination. access because it's not actually connected. Extend that. Lock that. Now we can mess with it. So yeah, long bar with top X, that's basically what I did in regards to searching. Uh, use piston connector to transfer components to welder connectors, also in limited inventory space. So here's one thing that can happen. Toggle block on, should finish. Now very carefully, uh, red means it's on, it means it's bad. It means that if I'm not careful, I start losing health really fast and die. Luckily I managed to step away. I stood in front of welders before and died. It's not a pretty thing. However, you can actually loot your own inventory, and I'll demonstrate that right now. So, respawn. Turn it off. There's my corpse. Press I to access inventory. And then I can steal back what I had. 
This is really good if you have components or stuff that you want to get back, or weapons like the rifle ammo. Really, really bad if you're floating off in space and have to do it. So yeah, load welder components, turn it on. While there's are dangerous, do not approach when light is red. Light is not red, we're okay. Open hangar door. We've got the uranium from storage. Walk up here. Reactor requires uranium. Power's on. Piston reverse. Open the door. And Objective this complete. tutorial is actually fairly quick. Alright, tutorial 7 jetpack. This one's annoying. It's the most difficult because of random shenanigans. Um, it's actually fairly straightforward but time consuming. But this isn't. This also has that. So, yeah, during our jetpack stops character being affected by local gravity. So, I'll go in third person demonstrate this. X is the jetpack button. The space bar, which is normally jump as you go up. The crouch button, which is C as you go down. D, A, W, S. The mouse turns around, or rather looks. Um, which is a one way of rotating. E rotates to the right, Q rotates to the left. C is the dampener button, so when you press Z and you turn dampeners off and you press, for instance, space, you start going up, you don't stop. But if you press it on, you stop after time, depending on how fast you're going. Pressing X has it go off. If you press it back on before you hit the ground and give yourself a little bit of time, you might slow down enough so you don't get damage. Uh, let's see if I can get high enough to demonstrate some damage. Ah, little trickier than I thought. Maybe a little higher? Nope. Okay, I went too high up, so I'm in no gravity, so I start floating. And then... Health critical. Yep, falling down. So we have to heal that. And we get to listen to that sweet, sweet healing bass. Anyway, open the door, jetpack on, don't really need to have it on, because demonstration number two, we are now no longer in the gravity field, so the jetpack goes on. This is assuming you have the jetpack enabled in whatever world you're in. Like the other tutorials, if it's not, you just fall. Or float continuously in whatever direction you were going. Or if you just turn off the power, weird things happen. Okay, use jetpack to exit door. Six seconds to reach you from here. There's the door. This is the room. That's space. So, open exit door. Light turns green. Fly towards Go through it, the sensor closes the door behind you, and then we get this fun thing. Uh, use jetpack to fly the door, you have 10 seconds from when you hit the button. I'm gonna try once to see if I can actually go through it. And actually not- nope. Okay, I died. Respawn. Anyway, I'm going to try to do that the uh, other way that I do it normally. Or at least the way I figured out might be easier. So open door. See, now there's no respawn here, which makes this annoying. But not the most annoying. So open exit door. Fly around. And we should hopefully get there. Nope, I hit the wall too fast. I actually went through the wall. No, the camera went through the wall. Okay, good news. We're actually going to start respawning here. Bad news. 
have to open another door with button one and open the other door and have ten seconds to reach it with button four. But here's the problem. Oh, so I can actually maybe cheat this. Uh, that would take too long though. So yeah, those are all artificial mass blocks. They're on, so they get affected by the artificial... Well, they get affected by the gravity, basically. So they start floating around like that. And if they hit you, it hurts, but more importantly, they stop your momentum. Door's on the other side of that. Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, that hasn't happened before. Normally I hit something, or die. Anyway, med room. So, new respawn point. Face to the end of the tunnel. Turn dampers on with Z. You'll need the dampers to complete this because it's not a straight line. Also, the lights will turn red when the timer runs out. Return to the start try again. Watch out for the warheads. They will explode if you get too close. Press start course button. 40 seconds to reach the final door. And we'll go third person for no reason. Those are the warheads. They will blow up. It's not pretty. Also, if you hit these walls too fast, you will take damage and or die. That's why you need the dampers. Once again, space. Anyway, last uh, tutorial, building your own ship. Your first ship. So once again, spawn point behind us. This is a bunch of stuff about using character tools like welder to weld things and grinder if you need to. Take breaks because this actual one takes a while. Or this one actually takes a while. So, first things first, we're going to go into the inventory, get the grinder, and get a interior plate or two. Um, also, we're going to need some steel plates. Now, normally, you go to stage 1, build that, stage 2, build that, stage 3, build that, stage 4, build that, in this location here, and that's basically what it's going to end up looking like. It's actually a fairly solid design for a small ship. Uh, G for the blocks in your toolbar, uranium ingots, this is actually a kind of easy one to do in regards to it being probably the most straightforward. It's build a ship, fly to the end. Have this pop up, go to our landing gear. Now since we're making a small ship we need a construction component, which I didn't grab. I'll put that there. Now I'm going to put some light armor slopes here. You'll see why in a moment. start with this, which means you need the construction component. Stations are large ships because of how they're constructed. You need a uh, steel plate in order to start it with the first block. Just like building anything else. So we put that down. And then we can start building off of it in any which way we want to. You can build to the side like that. But I have a much easier way of dealing with this. So first off, we're going to rotate. Um, it's insert, delete, home, and page up, page down are what let you rotate blocks when you're placing them. And unfortunately, I can't grind through this because it's indestructible, like all the other tutorial stuff. Well, nearly all. But what I can do is I can jump. Inventory to the reactor. Put uranium in it. Power goes on. And we have ourselves a fully completed ship that we don't need to mess around with. 
so ship controls, Y button turns stuff off, and then as you notice on the right side it'll tell you how much power is required for you to actually do stuff. Um, if you press that again, power comes back on to everything, and the Y just shuts reactors down only. So spotlights on or off, bass, speed, power usage, reactors, thrusters, how many you have and whether they're all operating, dampeners, on or off, gyroscopes, which let you rotate. Gyroscopes, which let you rotate. Fuel time, which is how much power you have left based on what you're doing at the time that it checks. Never batteries in use if you have any landing gears and if they're close to anything to lock on. So we'll unlock that with P. Press spacebar to go up very carefully. Stick in third person mode so we don't hit the ceiling. Uh, press D to go to the right, and it's jetpack controls at this point. Sensor goes on. If you don't have a gyroscope on, you can't rotate like that. Um, I'll see if I can demonstrate that better when I get outside, because I think you can shut it off manually. Well, when I say manually, I'll toggle that off. Now I'm moving my mouse around and I can't do anything, but I can still move in the direction of the thrusters. Toggle that back on, we can go that way. So now we just fly to the end. And if we press inertia dampeners off with Z, we just float in the direction that we're going at the constant speed that we're going. Although it does slow down slightly if we start screwing around with turning and pressing buttons. So once again, get close, sensor goes off, and we can fly right in, and hopefully not hit anything. So that's it for that tutorial, but there's one last thing to demonstrate, and I'll see if I can back up enough to do it. Also, if power usage ever says overload, it means that you don't have enough power to accurately um, use the best of everything. So yeah, that's it for flying. Um, and the tutorials for now. I'll probably do the intermediate ones and whatnot and post them up when they actually come out.